Welcome everyone to that part of the year where we pick out the best of what 2023 had to offer. You had some cool and quirky looking EVs, hatchbacks and crossovers, sedans trying to hold their ground, practical MPVs and of course the mainstay of the Indian automotive industry, lots of SUVs. And today we're going to find out which one of them will take home the top honours. Reliance General Insurance presents the Autocar Awards 2024 in partnership with the Times Network with tyre partner Redestine Tyres. It was an interesting mix of candidates as always, but apart from the cars present here, there will be other models too that will be judged for category awards. However, for the car of the year crown, every car must adhere to the following rules. The car has to be launched in the past calendar year. The car has to be homologated for India or brought in via the 2500 homologation free import rule. The car has to be available to private buyers and that the car needs to have had significant powertrain, interior and sheet metal changes. Obviously, the cars here won't be competing against each other, but will be judged primarily on their fitness for purpose by an eminent set of jurors. Narayan Karthikeyan, the fastest Indian. Manvendra Singh, automotive historian. Horma Sorabji, editor, Autoka India. Renuka Kirpalani, consulting editor, Autoka India. And Shapur Kotwal, deputy editor, Autoka India. And let's hear from them what it takes to be car of the year. So, car of the year, like every year, is that one car that stands out from all the others. Now, how does it stand out? Well, it has to be something that really takes the game forward in its own category. At the end of the day, it's what consumers are looking for. Does it do something more special? Does it do something that's even a little bit out of the box? So, the car of the year is that car that comes into its class and redefines the standards. It takes things forward. It's better in most ways and it creates a new benchmark for that class. A lot of people look for a lot of uh, value in their car. It's not the cheapest car or the uh, most economical car winning the event. That's a misconception as far as the car of the year award is concerned now. So you have to look into the fact that it's a, it's a, it, it has some uh, safety aspects, some economical aspects, uh, drivability comfort and of course say, uh, in the end of the day the price does count. So a car of the year for me is a car that um, uh, speaks to me as soon as I step into the car. Uh, something that stands out, um, something that uh, makes you sit up and take notice. Uh, because uh, things have gotten so close these days between cars, it's hard to really differentiate between a lot of them. But sometimes, uh, once in a while, there's a car that comes along and makes you say, oh wow, uh, this is something different. And I think that for me is car of the year. Not only design, but affordability, and all other factors. Of course, dynamics for me is a big part, um, but uh, you know, it's going to be uh, quite a close um, competition, I, I, I believe, this year. So, yeah, um, happy to be part of the jury. And here are the jury's thoughts on this year's lineup. We've got a good mix of cars, we've got hybrids, we've got diesels, we've got petrol and really that is the way forward. multi power trains, that's how it's going to be in India for a long time and that's what we've got in this year's lineup as well. But this year we also have some mass market cars in the mix and that's what's going to make it interesting. But I think it's more uh, uh, SUV and MUV centric than anything else and India has now become a centre for MUVs and SUVs. SUVs of course still seem to dominate and rule the roost and it kind of uh, tells you what the whole market is like. Uh, everybody wants an SUV in every segment. The trend the, in the world right, right now, SUV kind of dominates the other platforms. Um, so it's a very, very important category for us and we will be evaluating them in the off-road section as well. Once the jury got acquainted with all the cars and their features, it was time to jump in the driver's seat for some laps around the freshly laid out coast circuit that is owned by none other than the fastest Indian and autocar juror, Naren Karthikeyan. And the competition began in the EV segment with the smallest car of the lineup, the MG Comet. So Comet really a, a great little city car. I'm really impressed with the interiors, the quality of the interiors. In fact, it's so much better than a lot of the more expensive cars we've got out here. But not a complete car at the end of the day. Uh, feels small, compact, small wheels uh, and just doesn't give you a proper car feel. That's really the problem. 
it serves the purpose very well. It's definitely a city car. And surprisingly enough, I was all thinking it's a glorified golf cart, but it's not. It's a proper car and it's, it behaves so. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised with the MG Comet. Um, I mean, you can feel quite a high quality of packaging interiors. Of course, the car has a high CG. So, you know, it leans a lot, but uh, I mean, it's a fun little car, I felt, and, um, um, you know, very impressive. Next up was the EV from Citroen, the EC3. So it's French, so it has to be quirky, and yes, you started with the key, so that's different. And of course, the French sense of what is basic is very different from what ours is, and uh, that's why there's a bit of a gap between the kind of features you need and want in this country, in India and what this car has. But the fundamentals, wow, they're pretty impressive and uh, yes, it works really well as an electric runaround. The Citroen EC3 is actually pretty cool for a car that rides so well. I didn't expect it to handle as well as it does. The steering feels really nice. Uh, uh, we're driving on a tighter go-kart track so you can really get to tell about the handling and honestly, it just felt so connected to the road and I didn't quite expect that from this car. Next was the very cool looking Hyundai Ionic 5. I think it's it's among all the cars that I think is the most outstanding cars, not just because of its styling and proportion, which Hyundai has got it absolutely correct. You can see the influence of their styling vision and it doesn't date. So beautiful, so elegant, just looking like a wow. <laughs> The more I drive this car, the more I really like it. It just combines everything that you want out of a car in one great package. Uh, whether we talk about comfort, whether we talk about looks, whether we talk about space, uh, whether we talk about driving pleasure and that coming from an EV is saying a lot. Ionic 5, it's just blown me away. I mean, this is an amazing car, not just an EV, but as a car, really hard to fault. It drives brilliantly, super smooth. Look at the interiors, absolutely revolutionary. Uh, the only thing is the price. Well, actually, it's quite well priced for what it is, uh, given the fact that it's CKD and, you know, there are duties involved. But still around 50 lakhs, very few takers. But that doesn't stop it from being an outstanding car. It's an electric car, but it's different. It's very different. It's retro, it's modern, it's beautifully built on the inside. It works as an electric car, it works as a luxury car, it works as a comfortable riding car, it works as a driver's car, it just works. I think the, um, the Ionic 5, I mean, it's such a lot of fun to drive um, from, um, you know, it's one of the, uh, I think in today, the lineup we have, possibly the most fun because it's rear wheel drive, instant torque, you know, the styling as well, I really like the styling. Um, the interior is a bit retro, but, um, quality of materials really, really high. Following the Ionic was yet another EV, the Mahindra XUV 400. It's an EV, yet you feel that you're not really driving an EV. It doesn't give that feeling of an EV. It's still a, a maybe because of what uh, the dynamics are sitting and the like how you are operating the car and what feel you're getting from it. Strong performance, uh, quite honestly, and uh, it uh, has a decent amount of space, a good boot as well, but uh, overall interiors are nothing special and uh, even as far as features go, uh, not up to class standards, but uh, I think I would wait for the update. Next is Hyundai's latest small car, the Exter. has the potential to be car of the year, I think. Uh, drives nicely. In fact, on this tight go-kart track, it handled very nicely as well, which was very impressive. Um, I think ride quality would also be good enough for a car of its size. Um, feature packed, so it has everything that you want. First of all, the level of the quality of the car is very high for entry-level car, which is packaged with a lot of features. Uh, really nice little in, uh, car for the city. Um, of course, um, you know, on a on a track, it's a little bit soft, but that doesn't matter. Very comfortable. Really like the car, packaged well. Now, with emission norms getting tighter, engines getting smaller, cars getting heavier, it's difficult to make a good mechanical package. But Hyundai have really excelled here. Nice engine, great gearbox, works well, good brakes. It's just a pleasure to drive, and the interior is practical as well. Also, what I like is that they made a statement 
with this car it's not just a bland plain looking car they made a statement it looks nice it looks different it's not to everybody's taste but yes they have made an attempt 100% i think hyundai has uh, got it spot on and i like the styling of the car it's a very proportionate looking car with a multitude of uh, color combinations which have been introduced by hyundai and it suits the indian environment so this is a very pleasant surprise and it's a very nicely packaged car and i'm sure uh, hyundai is going to find itself in the top top level contenders in in this class 100% up next is the stylish looking maruti suzuki frongx progress 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 beautifully executed exterior package as they say nice design especially the rear nicely done interior bits of metal different colors feels richer nicer to drive as well maybe a bit more power from that engine maybe the turbo is better but yes incremental steps from maruti and overall a nice package Maruti honestly has done a fantastic job with the Frongs considering it's really based on a Bellino given it very distinctive styling in fact it looks absolutely uh, great uh, interiors again very much of the Bellino but that's no bad thing um, it's uh, pretty well appointed i love the seats in fact i think uh, Maruti typically now aces it with the seat comfort decent high seating position and really as a crossover it works well just which it had a stronger set of engines It's quite a nice car actually the Fronx um I've been driving it for a while and driven it again here today back to back with the other cars and it it really stands its ground well of course being a driving enthusiast I'd like a little bit more performance you know but for those who want frugality uh who want features who want space comfort uh and actually really good driving manners this car does the job of doing it all very well We move on to the sedans with the Hyundai Verna You sit in the car you get this really nice low to the ground sporty feel and while the engine is really nice uh, it's got a nice strong engine sadly the handling doesn't keep up with it uh, the steering really doesn't have too much feel body roll is a lot so yeah if you're looking for a car for a, as an enthusiast while it gives you the sporty feeling in the way that it looks so in you know your seating position it really doesn't feel like that when you drive it but i have to say that the engine is 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 a good engine and it feels nice to drive so the verna really well equipped car as usual hyundai has thrown everything it can into it it's got a wide range of engines as well uh, it's more spacious than before ticks all the boxes uh, you'd want in a sedan next up is the high end of the segment with the bmw 7 series I think uh, BMW has done a wonderful job expressing what luxury is all about with the 7 series. I mean each aspect of this car's design is brilliant. There are few things that you know uh, stand out uh, to me as far as the styling is concerned is the texture of material used in every uh, which in, and not overly done. It still represents a very subtle stubble way of expressing luxury as it should be. So BMW is now definitely one of the pinnacles of luxury brand. In India. BMW's full-fledged luxury car and this is a whole new take on luxury a whole new style sheet a whole new way of making a luxury car and boy is that screen crazy 7 series of course the all new 7 series and um, has all the comforts what you, you know packaged for extra you know comfortable ride and so on and so forth it's just the uh, everything is great about this car but the looks you know it, you have to really get used to it and you need to really want to get used to the looks of this car batting for the mbvs is toyota's variant of the maruti ertiga the rumion still a very practical car very spacious drives nicely still has all the good attributes but uh you know as the years pass by you realize how things advance and things change over the years and Uh, maybe a car of the year in one particular year has so much more to compete with in another year so the rumion another successful badge engineering exercise between uh, toyota and maruti this is the eltiga in essence uh, and uh, again an mpv that really ticks all the boxes uh, don't forget eltiga was uh, our car of the year some time back and with good reason it's spacious it's decently equipped 
not a very exciting product but really as a people mover for the price uh, this one does the job just the way the Altiga did. Following the Rumion is yet another badge engineering result, Maruti's version of the Innova Hycross called the Invicto. Maruti's take on Toyota's MPV, it's strong hybrid MPV and could it be that Maruti knows what people want better, what specification and what features they want better? I think so. Toyota has always had an upmarket view and Maruti is, but with this I think Maruti is trying to reach into the Toyota territory. Very well appointed car, very well finished uh, vehicle. And I think it should do well in the market, being a Maruti. It's really good as a people mover, it's comfortable and now it comes with the advantage of being a hybrid which means, you know, fuel efficiency which is important when you do long distances uh, in something like this. But considering that you spend a long time, you know, within the four doors of this car, I think interior quality at this price point uh, is something that lets it down a bit. Next, it's time to jump into the SUVs, starting with the French Citroën C3 Aircross. As far as the French cars, especially Citroën, Peugeot, and uh, their driving dynamics are fantastic for Indian conditions. They, they drive very well. Their suspensions are uh, super smooth. But for some reason, you know, the styling on this car doesn't suit the Indian this thing. That's why not been very successful as far as the looks are concerned of the car. It goes over bumps really well. And the steering has a bit of weight, which is quite nice. Sometimes, sometimes not so nice. The interior, yes, it could have done with some better finishing, some better fit, some better features. It could be more appealing to Indian customers. So while some of the basics are right, it needs a lot more kit and flash. It's time for Honda's newest SUV, the Elevate. When you get into a Honda, you just expect it to be refined and it's kind of anti-climax in here. The engine really makes a lot of noise, especially when you compare it with the other cars around that are pretty refined. Otherwise than that, um, has a good amount of features. Uh, not particularly a fan of the interiors. I think a lot of bits of it are very old school compared to the modern cars that we're getting today. Yeah, um, quite a few things that let it down. Uh, it could have been a better product. So Elevate, Honda's first proper SUV. It's got all the ingredients of an SUV. I love the design. I think it really stands out. Very upright stance, uh, very well packaged, uh, lots of space, well thought out. Uh, but uh, doesn't really stand out in any area. Uh, engine a bit too noisy for my liking and it should have had a solid turbo or even a diesel, uh, which is what you need in an SUV because you want that mid-range punch, uh, which isn't there. So, uh, but overall, uh, a very well um, uh, conceived SUV. I mean, the Honda Elevate, very simplistic in design interiors um, and uh, really like the high revving engine. Um, and, but in terms of the shift quality, this is a manual, um, you know, it's very notchy and a lot of uh, room for improvement there, but um, Overall, uh, seems to be, you know, uh, quite a well-packaged car, I would say. From the subtle design of the Elevate, it's time to get into the quirky-looking Maruti Jimny. So, as far as fitness for purpose goes, which is how you judge cars, this off-roader is great when you have some really challenging paths, you have some places to climb, you have slippery conditions, it's got just the right hardware, a body on frame, with a solid axle at the back, and that's what it's meant for. When you get it on the road, of course, it's compromised. And this car is quite heavily compromised. It needs more power. It's a bit high and rolly and a bit painful to drive. And yeah, that's the combination. You buy it for what it is. And if you want our off-roader, that's what you get. There's something really endearing about the Jimny. Uh, just the character it is. Uh, car is Cooled in a low speed environment, so whether you're in the city or going off-roading where you don't have to ask too much of the engine, but get it at high speed and really the 1.5 very sluggish as is the 4-speed uh, auto, so not a great highway car, quite narrow also, no place to keep things, so practicality not that great. I think this is a car you buy more with your heart than with your head. Um, it's a car about its attitude, it's a car about lifestyle. Uh, and it does that pretty well. I mean, you, you do get uh, 
that smile on your face when you drive the jimny um other than that it's it's pretty nice to drive uh, all i would have liked is just that little bit more power in this car uh if it had that i think uh, that would make it a whole lot better next is bmw's latest x1 that's all new on the outside and inside so the largest selling luxury suv in the country and this new one is even more luxurious on the inside it's really beautifully built plush with chrome leather you know the works it really does feel like an x3 or an x5 from the inside thing is it's more of a luxury car and less of a bmw driver's car it doesn't have the sort of power performance punch or the handling chops so the next generation x1 as expected it's grown up uh, better interiors uh, i like the design also it's pretty good with this little floating uh, center console over here like the position of the wireless charger also with the upright uh, stack for the phone uh, so really i mean it's uh, really well thought out um, it drives pretty well as well but doesn't quite drive like a bmw front wheel drive little soft doesn't have that same dynamic appeal so yes uh, it's a better a uh, compact luxury suv but not necessarily a better bmw into audi's stylish mid-size suv the q3 sportback audi has always had that uh, uh, niche uh, segment for itself as far as styling dynamics and driving uh, capability is concerned i really like the, uh, the 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 design of the of the car overall plus especially the dashboard is not in your face uh, mostly all these cars now reaching out with so many screens end up looking like a video game rather than a car that is uh, uh, so you know it gives you still an old school feeling which is what i i look for in many cars now the new uh, q3 actually is very impressive to drive i really like the way that this car handles i love the responsive steering um, the engine is good so if you're a driving enthusiast you actually enjoy driving this suv uh, it's very very pleasurable and otherwise than that you get everything that comes with the luxury of audi you get great interiors packed with features um, and yes for its size it's uh, spacious and comfortable enough so i think a great uh, suv i think for its category the audi q3 really shines yes it says sportback and it is sporty it's a nice fun sporty drive it's a little more agile than you expect from an suv and what i particularly like is how well they've put together the interior it's a nice blend of this piano black chrome and it just works the interior and you feel comfortable even the seats are really comfortable so a great luxury suv and i think something that more people should buy this sportback next is the latest suv from the three pointed star the mercedes benz glc It's a car that's engineered for comfort and luxury and it does that really really well. It's got a very nice engine too. Interiors give you all the features, very modern, very new age with the large touch screens. There's one thing I don't like, it's the spin stripe on the dashboard. Never liked it in any of their cars. Don't like it here as well. So GLC a another fully loaded SUV from Mercedes and with that comes uh, a jump in price, but you really do get a fair bit for the kit. What I like is it drives uh, really well, quite a sharp handler uh, for an SUV, and uh, overall just the right size in terms of space, uh, uh, maneuverability, and uh, I think it's hit the sweet spot in the luxury SUV market. This is the new GLC, um, you know, absolutely fantastic. The materials inside the car very similar to the the C class. You know, it feels more like a you know a sporty sedan. than an SUV i think it's very compact very practical and uh, price point maybe a bit in the higher side more practical than the C class in many ways with the same performance and um, slightly better comfort i would say and that marks the end of the car of the year 2024 jury round you've heard the jurors take but now it's time for you to vote as well head on to autocindia.com/viewerschoice2024 and win a chance to present the viewers choice award yourself on the 17th of january at the autoka awards in mumbai